Uh, we're going to go out live to RIT where they have a 3D printer. That's right. That's for Professor Dennis Cormier. He's been giving us a demonstration. Dennis, this is really great. Before we get going back to the printer, can I just pepper you with a couple of quick questions? Uh, one, how much do these go for? Can regular consumers buy these? And where can they pick them up? The, yes, uh, there are actually some of these models are under $1,000 now. The MakerBot that you see right here, this particular model is $2,800. They have another model that's about $2,000. Believe it or not, some of these companies are partnering with uh, Staples and other office supply stores. So MakerBots are, are available through a whole bunch of different uh, commercial channels. And you showed us uh, some... They go from yeah. I'm, I'm sorry, they, they go from $2,800 up to almost a million dollars if you're uh, making titanium parts. No, I, I don't. I have no, uh, I have lots of hobbies. Making titanium parts is not one of them. Um, right, right. So you showed us obviously some medical stuff that, and you showed us the metal piece that you've already made. You know, general yeah. folks out there, what can they make that they might be interested in? Uh, there, there are a lot of hobbyists that are making, uh, I mean, for fun things is very uh, iPhone covers, you know, custom iPhone covers with turning gears and things like that. Uh, there are people, very low cost handheld scanners now that use the Connect, you know, the gaming scanner. And there's software out there that lets you scan your head. So people are making mini me <laughs> bobblehead uh, types of things with these low cost 3D printers. And, and just some gadgets for around the house, uh, you know, uh, inventors. Hackers, tinkerers, you know, they're making mechanical, mostly mechanical parts with these types of printers. Dennis, I can tell you that I would be that person that would take this incredible life-changing technology and make a bobblehead. <laughs> I would do yeah, something well, like you're, that. You're not alone. <laughs> me, me too. All right, so RIT, what are you guys doing? Obviously, you have it set up in the Brinkman Lab. Are you just uh, yep. toying with the stuff now, or are you trying to advance the technology? What's going on there? A big part of what we're trying to do, because the local industry, uh, you know, Kodak and Xerox and Corning and all these companies that have deep roots in printing, and a lot of them are trying to evolve their business into printed electronics and things like that. And that, if you, if you look at this machine right here and you think of printed electronics, they're very similar. You're laying down material. So what we're trying to do, we're doing a lot of work on trying to combine the two processes where we would print electronic materials embedded within a 3D printed part. So uh, for uh, higher end, th this, this wouldn't be for consumer use, but for uh, commercial use, uh, you know, sensors and, and little motors and um, measuring temperature, things like that that you might want in, uh, in some higher end types of systems. So is this similar to what we see in the 2D printer world where the price for the actual printer is low and then they get you on the cartridges? <laughs> uh, uh, for the most part, yes, that's true. But one, a lot of people tell me that they didn't realize 3D printing has been around for a while. One of the reasons you're hearing about 3D printing right now is because this patent expired a little over three years ago. And almost overnight, there were these open source printers. So this printer right here, you can put anyone's plastic in it. It's, it's not a sealed cartridge where you have to buy the materials from them. Uh, but there are higher end professional systems where you do have to buy the consumables from them. And lastly, Dennis, I couldn't help but notice the human skull next to you. Um, <laughs> yep. I'm guessing that has something to do with the printer as well. Absolutely. So a lot of uh, this is one of the primary uses uh, for 3D printing right now. You've got soldiers coming back from Afghanistan and Iraq, uh, cancer victims and things like that, where there might be a, a skull fracture or a piece of bone that has to be replaced. And that's not a mass-produced model, uh, you know, a, a knee implant, for instance, that you can just go out and buy one. And so the same process that's used to make these titanium parts that we talked about earlier, there are companies that will make custom-fitting titanium bone plates for uh, accident victims, cancer victims, and things like that. Unbelievable. Dennis Cormier, thank you so much. Good luck with all your work. Thanks so much for joining us this morning. Okay, thank you.